Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our Gospel reading, Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Please be seated. Your fellow redeemed in Christ. It could not have been easy, really. She had carried this child for nine months. She went through the pain of childbirth without an epidural, mind you. She nursed her, fed her, and changed her dirty diapers. She had watched this child grow, watched her take her first steps, heard her say her first words. She could remember the first day of school, how pretty her little daughter looked in her new dress. This was her little girl, her precious child. There were illnesses in the past, a cold here, a headache there, the flu from time to time. But now, she was suffering from no ordinary illness. This was a living nightmare. Her daughter, her precious daughter, was possessed by a demon. Wild behavior. Dirty. Uncontrollable. <coughs> there was no cure. No treatment, no miracle drug that would take it all away. Every day, worse than the last. Think of her relief when she heard that a man was coming to her town, a man who reportedly was casting out demons from people. Was he finally the answer to her prayer? Now think of her disappointment when that man completely ignored her. Did he not know what was at stake? Did he not care? Of course we know that man. His name is Jesus. And he does care. It doesn't matter. Trouble with health, trouble with a job, trouble with a spouse or fiancé or kids, trouble with credit cards and debt, trouble with doubt or depression, trouble with overcoming temptation and, or making decisions. Always know that Jesus cares. He cares for you. And although it, didn't, it did not seem like he cared at first, he did care for this woman and her daughter. Notice when all was said and done what Jesus said to her. O woman, great is your faith. This woman was a woman of faith, but she had some big troubles. Yet based upon what Jesus says, she had something going for her. She had great faith. And so today we are going to take a moment and we're going to examine what great faith does in the face of big trouble. When we do that, I think we will clearly see some very simple yet very important truths. Great faith looks to Jesus and keeps looking to Jesus no matter what. Even though this woman had great faith, it seems as though Jesus had really bad manners in our text. When the woman first came to him, Matthew doesn't try to rewrite history concerning Jesus. 
but he simply says Jesus did not answer her a word. In other words, Jesus ignored her. But this woman would not be denied. She kept pleading, begging for help. Finally, the disciples had enough, and I'm sure they were partly annoyed, but mostly embarrassed. After all, she was making quite a scene, and, and you know, people were staring and stuff. So they said to Jesus, you gotta do something. Why don't you just send her away, for she keeps crying out to us. Now maybe it's obvious to us, or maybe it isn't. But what Jesus is really doing here in this text is he's putting this mother's faith to the test. He's examining what her faith is made of, even in these extreme circumstances. And then... When Jesus finally speaks, when she finally gets a word from this miracle worker, he says to her, I was sent only to the lost house of Israel. As if ignoring this woman and her problems wasn't bad enough, Jesus tells her plainly, I did not come here to help you. I came to help my people Israel. Now to us, his words might seem harsh, but his words are absolutely true. God's plan to rescue us from our sins was predicated on the notion that someone had to take our place. Someone had to be our substitute. Someone had to live perfectly because that is what God demands of each of us. And because we don't, someone had to endure the punishment we deserve for not living perfectly. After all, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Furthermore, that someone had to be God because only God is perfect. Since God cannot die, God had to become mortal in order that he might die in our place. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He took on flesh and became human in order to die for all those times that we disobey God. Yet he remained perfect because Jesus is God. So what does this have to do with Jesus only coming to the house of Israel? Here's the point. Make no mistake about it, my friends. Jesus has a heart for absolutely everyone. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how much money you make or how big or small you are. None of that matters to Jesus. Jesus lived and died for everyone. But God's plan to reach out to the entire world did not start until Jesus had completed his mission right here among the people of Israel. A mission that involved a cross, a grave, and an empty tomb. That's the meaning of the statement. It's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. You see, Jesus was not being impolite here. Rather, he was saying, the day will come when I will draw all people to myself, not just the Jews. The day will come when my disciples and their disciples and their disciples will go to the ends of the earth to tell everyone, man, woman, and child, my story. That day is not now, but that day is coming. Now, I think what's most amazing about this whole dialogue is the woman's response to Jesus. Was she offended? No. But she didn't give up either. Rather, she got right to the point and she said, being a dog at the foot of the master's table means that she has a master. And even the crumbs that fall from that master's table are better 
than anything else anyone could ever give. In other words, this woman is saying, Lord, even the crumbs that fall from your table are better, more delicious, and more satisfying than any feast that anyone in this whole entire world could ever place in front of me. Now do you see why Jesus says, O oh woman, great is your faith? She was content because she realized that even the crumbs from the Lord are better than anything this world could ever offer to her. An answer to her prayers would come, but it would come in God's time and in God's way. And this mother, this mother knew this and she believed it. Now, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate to wait in line. When it's time to go to the checkout at the store, I immediately zero in on that one checkout that has the shortest line. Unfortunately, it's usually always the new worker who is in training and it takes forever to get through the line. <laughs> Likewise, I cannot stand construction delays on the highway. I've got a place to go and a time to get there and I need to get there. And can someone, else, can someone here explain to me why every time I try to go through five corners, there is a train? <laughs> I don't like to wait. And I don't like to wait for God's answer either. It might even seem like he's ignoring me. How many of you have ever felt that way? I think we all have. If you have then remember this, at just the right time, at just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under law. And that worked pretty well for us, didn't it? When the time was right, God brought together a man and a woman conceived and born and we are here today breathing and living our lives all things considered God's timing is is pretty dependable isn't it God knows how to help us with our troubles and he knows when to help us too you know we can spend many hours of our life worrying about our faith whether we have a great faith or whether we have a small faith. Yet the point is not about us. The point of this text is not about us. It's not about our life. Instead, we should take a lesson from this woman in our text and focus our attention upon Jesus. She put her trust in Jesus, confident and content, that he would indeed bless her at just the right time and in just the right way, even if the, his blessing would come in the form of crumbs. Because even the crumbs that fall from the Lord's table are more delicious, more satisfying, more fulfilling than anything else anyone can offer. And boy, did his blessing as Matthew tells us that this woman's daughter was healed instantly. She knew Jesus would hear her in her time of need. And by faith, so do we. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.